Hey, what's up, known YouTube? On today's episode, we're gonna be working on the wiring harness for the truck, getting the ECU mounted, and some other little bits. I haven't been the best with filming, so a lot of that stuff is already done, so we're just gonna kinda jump into it. And I'm gonna take you through how I wired some things and some decision-making behind it after conversations with my good friend who got me this ECU, I have finally understood how to wire things. So, a little bit more on that later, but let's get after it. So we're working on dropping the gas tank today. So, watched a few YouTube videos on how to do this a while ago, we're gonna wing it. So, what I got, I see, uh, we're gonna undo this stuff, and there's uh, four bolts in the back, four bolts in the front to drop this tank as really close up i don't know and uh, we're gonna do this so i can put a in-tank fuel pump in here to run the uh, new fuel injection system here we go well that wasn't too bad we're almost there i guess uh got some bolts undone and the tank is loose uh, i haven't driven this truck in over a year now so there's hardly any gas in the tank thank goodness just got to shove those through the frame rail and uh, drop her down all the way. And just like that, the tank is out. Made a mess. But I'm gonna clean that up next. And I just gave the tank a little bath, get all the dirt off of it. So power washed it real quick. So I'm going to uh, PB blaster these little baby screws, let them sit overnight. I'm going to take my little uh, hammer screwdriver, take those out. So this plug is for the fuel gauge. So I'm going to figure out how to wire those two wires into my new sending unit because I'll also need power for the fuel pump itself. This whole filming thing by yourself is a little tricky sometimes, but I'll get better at it. So, little baby mask, truck fuel pump. Nope. Oh. So this fuel pump is only capable of, um, can do up to 90. So see the size difference. <laughs> so uh, that's what we're gearing towards. So I'll be modifying this bracket a little bit to uh, hold this dude in there. And yeah, a little bit. So that's the next step. Pull that out. Be good to go. I have the gas tank in with this new fuel pump in there. Uh, the modifications went really well. It worked well to use a late model truck in tank fuel pump and modify it a, an RX-7 pump to that sender. And so I got the tank back in here already. I had to add an extra wire in here. So I got everything tucked up in there, put all new high pressure fuel lines. And so the new uh, fuel pump power is all the way in there. And then I ran it up to the, I ran it up to the fuse panel and I put a relay up in there and then it came out and gave power to here through the PTC fuse is a 20 amp fuse. So I decided to use that one. And I think that that's going to work really well. This was fun over here. 
this is the harness for the computer, which was basically controlled the feedback carburetor that the truck had. And I needed the windshield wipers to work. So I cut the plug out and then the windshield wiper, a couple wires. And so all of this was just for the feedback carburetor. All of this is for the feedback carburetor. So this one even looks like a fuel injector plug, but it wasn't. So I think I might need this. I'm not sure yet. Lettering. All of these wires for my Max ECU are labeled. Tiny little letters. So I'm trying to figure out where they go. This one is engine ground, and temperature, analog in three 12 volts. What are these little green ones? GP out two for TAC. So, ground out. I am getting closer to putting ends on all of these wires. I know where they go and I know how to wire them. So I am putting on the intake manifold temporarily to know where all my sensors go. Because we have the throttle positioning sensor. We have one back here that's the air temperature sensor. The other ones that are important are the water temperature sensor right here. Oh yeah, and the fuel injectors obviously, because those are important. So these are my wires to my fuel injectors. And uh, now since this is on here, I can figure out where I want to put the coils. Thought about putting them over here, but that's not gonna work. So they're gonna have to go over here somewhere, away from all the heat. Super cool coil pack that David made me. Some billet brackets, spark plug wires go on there. Four bolt holes. So we're trying to figure out where this should go, which way it should go. Should we point those up or should we point those down? Probably should point those up. Maybe it could go over here. That would be really long spark plug wires. So maybe we go down here. I don't know yet. Don't you know yet? This looks cool. I love this intake manifold. Ridiculous. It does loops and it does twists and it does more loops. From my inventory, I have lots of wiring harnesses. So I'm going to find me a harness out of here and sacrifice it and cut all of the plugs off of it to utilize my new harness. So I have five harnesses in here for various ones. This is from a convertible. So I don't even know if there some of these are labeled. That one also says convertible. Yeah. So hopefully I can find one with the high impedance fuel injectors in here. So, so we don't need none of that low impedance injector crap. What does this one say? 88 only, no injector resistor. This might be our ticket. So if it doesn't have a fuel injector resistor, that means it was running high impedance fuel injectors, which I think would make a cleaner wiring harness and not have to run resistor in here. But these plugs are broken. <laughs> Damn it. That might be the interesting thing. It's finding one with non-broken plugs. Let's see what happens. Well, I was trying to use a original harness, original engine harness from an FC to get all my um, sensor plugs off of. Though that was just, just not a good idea. So through the wonderful Facebook pages, I was able to find a dude who builds wiring harnesses and he sent me the vendor that he uses. And so I went with uh, Corsa Technic and they're just like a wholesale supplier for connectors out the wazoo. And they just have them by part numbers. So you just kind of got to know what you're looking for. Though they're super, super cheap super super quality so i got all of my connectors for this engine build and extra so we have a crank angle positioning sensor i got extra of those s5 vac got extra of those coolant temps throttle positioning sensor extra uh high impedance fuel injector plugs air temperature sensor and then one just no one shouldn't fall actually that's all of them that i'm using for the build 
it was like less than 50 bucks and I got extra. So I will put the link in the description and maybe some sort of spreadsheet with these part numbers on them for as a resource. Maybe so it'll be good. So we're using those to put everything together now. So much better solution. So to kind of catch up on things that I did off camera, we're gonna kind of do where we're at right now. So I've gotten the location of the new ECU determined, and it's where the old ECU went, down here on the inner kick panel. So this is the Max ECU Street Edition. So got the, the main computer plug, and then I have a couple wires immediately coming off of that into this plug right here. And so I have my ECU power, my ignition coil power, and then I also had to run my windshield wipers wires into this little plug because they tied in off of the original computer's harness. And so I just tied them in here. I also have two general purpose output wires here. One will go to my fuel pump relay and I think the other one will go to maybe the, the fan relay that has yet to be determined. And so then what this plug is, is this one right here, it's corresponding. And so I have my coil power wire and the rest of the windshield wiper wires and then a power to the ECU. And I still have an open spot to go from the general purpose output one to my fuel pump relay. These extra ones you see, this is for the heater blower fan. That one is too. This is the original plug that went to the stock ECU to manage the feedback carburetor. I don't need that anymore, so I'm just going to tie it up. Uh, I, I pulled all the wires out of it that I needed. And so, moving on. So, this is the chassis fuse block. I have ran a power wire to the max ECU. It originally actually powered the stock ECU, and so that hangs out on the engine fuse. And then my fuel pump, this was an unused fuse, and so I'm running my fuel pump off of that one. And then the fan will go off of one of these other ones as well that gets power on ignition switch. But yeah, other than that, you know, there's no AC in this truck, there's no radio, and there's no rear defroster at all. And yeah, so we've got lots of space to add a few more uh, power leads in here. Off camera, I also had to fix my ignition switch. I don't even know if I took any pictures of that, but I was experiencing when the key was completely on, it would lose connection. And then I would lose power to what I was searching for which was really annoying. So I took it completely apart, added some solder to the little copper tabs. So it's a temporary fix, but it'll work for right now. And the gauge cluster, this is the gauge cluster that came out of the pickup truck. Like I said, it's bare basic. I sourced another one that has a RPM gauge in it as well. This is the one I sourced out of a, an SE5 model, so the highest trim level. So it has a tack. And the goal of this is to put this gauge cluster in the truck so that I can have a tack running off the rotary engine because I always thought that would be kind of fun and a very clean addition to it. All of my other gauges are going to be run off that uh, AIM LCD display. Though I've decided that that little LCD display, I'm going to make tabs for it to mount right in front of the gauge cluster, though they will be a um, kind of like a quick disconnect way so that when I'm just driving the truck around town, I can just disconnect it. It won't mess with anything. That's just a readout. And then I could put it up there when I want to get rowdy because at this point, that's kind of the purpose of this build is to make it look like it came this way. And you know, you have to put parameters on that and restrictions so that it can come out to the desirable outcome. I thought this would go faster than it is, but it's a major learning curve for me because I've never done this before. So we're, we're learning. It takes a little bit extra time, but that's okay. That'll be done a while ago. But anyways, we're doing it now. We're still here. We're still going. We haven't given up yet. We're not giving up. 
So, now I have all of my wires for my new ECU coming out of this body plug. I have some extra ones uh, that I won't be using for right now. Though what I got going is got main engine fuses here in their original location, so that'll look dandy. Like, like you've seen, the air box will go here, so I'm tucking all my wires up under the core support. And I've pretty much unraveled the entire chassis harness. So this is the main chassis harness right here. I unraveled it so that I could move my coil wire. So originally, the one coil this pickup truck had set about here and had a big coil wire going to it. And so I thought it might be kind of neat to still use that coil wire so it wasn't just hot somewhere or trying to strip it back. So I pulled it out of the chassis harness, ran it back, ran it back down under the cab, and then to plug into that, uh, that main ECU plug you saw just a few seconds earlier. So then it comes back out here into my new wire that is properly labeled and back across a little bit extra redundancy, but oh well. And then where's my, I just finished wiring up the coils into my new coil harness. So I have my signal wires or these blue wires. And then I have my coil power wire, which is actually powered by the old coil, old power so that that's fused over here to one of i think it's the 80 amp main fuse and so that's all nice and clean it works well like that and then so on this the way i have my coils wired up the signals reds are power brown is ground but it's an ecu ground and then these two black wires are for battery ground so i have them going back over here to connect to right here, which is where the ground cable is tied to. And my good friend David, who hooked me up with the ECU, made this beautiful coil bracket. And so I got that mounted over here, kind of neatly um, out of the way of anything. I was trying to put it down here somewhere, but none of this is flat and that was becoming difficult. And so I think it'll work quite well over here. I had to push it this far back because of clearances. Uh, Cause I also still have the windshield washer tank that goes here. And then, yeah.